summary. In this movie, we're going to look at the summary sheet. This report enables us to see a snapshot of all the sections of work we've priced. It's where we can view and adjust the markups, overheads, and see the profit margins, and deal with any VAT. This report is designed for us, and wouldn't be something we'd necessarily show to our client. We can access this report at any stage during the pricing, to see how the job is shaping up financially. We should also look at it once the work is completely priced, before submitting our quote to our client, to ensure that we're completely satisfied with the costs and potential profits if the job is secured. There are several straightforward ways to access the summary report. While we're pricing, at the bottom of each pricing section, just above the total, there is a grey button that says View Summary. This will take us to the corresponding pricing section on the summary sheet. We can scroll up and down the summary sheet, or click this button here to view the totals. Alternatively, once the work has been priced and we have worked our way down to the very bottom of the pricing sheet, we can click the Go to Summary button. Again, we'll be taken to the summary sheet. The other option is to use the tabs at the top of the program. We click Reports and click the Summary button. OK, so now we know how to get to the summary sheet, let's take a look at exactly how we can use it and get the most out of the information it provides. Every available section on the pricing sheet has its own box on the summary, where we're provided with a snapshot of the financial information. They're all laid out in the same way. We have the title of the pricing section that this information relates to here. On the right, we can see the total cost, if any, of the plant that will be used in that section, the materials and the labour. Any hours are shown in this box and the overall cost is here. We need to remember that these figures are all cost. So this is the actual cost to our business if this section of work is carried out. No markups, overhead percentage or VAT is added onto the figures that are in these boxes. We can scroll down each section. We can check that all pricing sections that we want to include have been priced. It also provides an opportunity to check over the figures. For example, if we look at a section and any of the financial values or hours seem higher or lower than what we're expecting, we can click this button here and we'll be taken back to the top of the pricing section. We can check over the details that have been entered to ensure they're correct. We can then use this button that's located at the bottom of each pricing section to return to the summary. Individual boxes that hold the snapshot details of each pricing section are colour coded. By default they're grey, but as we go down we'll see that there are some peach coloured ones. This is because these sections of the pricing sheet have been entered as a PC sum. We'll look at how PC sums are dealt with in the summary sheet shortly. The colour coding is a simple to use reminder of how the cost is being dealt with. Where applicable, we can still see the breakdown of the financial values and hours in these PC sum sections. Once we've got to the bottom of the list of pricing sections, we can view the costs of the job on a square foot or metre square basis. Let's look at the square foot information. So we have the total area of the job in square feet. Next, we can see the cost per square foot. So this is the cost to us, with no markup, overheads or VAT added. Below this we can see the quotation price per square foot. So this is the amount the client will be paying us per square foot. This does include any markups, overheads or VAT that have been added. The square metre information works in the same way. So we have the area of square metres for the job as a whole. Here is the cost to us per square metre. So this figure doesn't have any markups, overheads or VAT added. Here is the price per square metre that the client would be paying if we did the job for them. This amount does include any markups, overheads or VAT that have been added. We also have the overall price information for the whole job here as well. If we click this thumbnail, we can see the floor areas that are included in the total metre square floor area. Next we have the section of the summary that enables us to add on unique markups to the different elements of the work. They all work in the same way. Let's take a look. First, we've got the plant. In the grey header, we can see the total cost of the plant to us. Below this, we can see the financial value of the markup that will be added to this. We have complete control over this markup amount. It corresponds directly to the markup percentage that's shown here. See, if we change this to a different percentage by using the sliders, the markup amount changes. As we can see, the total quotation cost that the client will be paying for this plant changes too. All the other values that would be affected by this change alter automatically at the same time. The same process applies to our materials. So here's the actual cost of these materials to us. No markup, overheads or VAT percentages are within this figure. Here is the amount of markup that will be added. Again, it directly relates to the percentage that's shown here. 
This is fully adjustable. And here is the total quotation price of these materials. The labour's next. Due to the additional work that's involved with organising and dealing with labour, it's likely that we'll want to set the markup higher. Again, here's the actual cost of the labour, and here's the financial value of the markup in relation to this percentage. We can use the sliders to change this, and here's the quotation price of the labour. Below this, we have the markup for the PC sums. Due to the nature of PC sums, these are dealt with independently. It's likely that any PC sums would be subcontracted out, so regardless of how we've broken up the costs on our pricing sheet between labour, plant and materials, the overall cost to us of each PC sum will be drawn together here and shown in this grey box. We can then view the financial value of the markup and change the markup percentage. Here, we can see the quotation price for the PC sums. An additional feature of PC sums is how they're presented to the client. As a PC sum is a provisional cost, rather than an exact price, in any documents designed for the client, they're rounded up to the nearest £100. We can click this thumbnail here and see a form that shows the breakdown of all the PC sums within our quote and how they'll be dealt with. So every pricing section that could be a PC sum is listed. Those that have been marked as PC sums have the financial information showing. So in this column, we can see the cost to us, next the profit that will be added, then the total. The final column shows the roundup of this total to the nearest £100. This is the total that the client will be provided with on their reports. If we want any further explanations about how the programme deals with PC sums, we can click on this blue info icon and read the help files. We can also access this help file by clicking the blue info icon located on the PC sums markup box. Services and professional fees also have their own markup too. Again, we can see the cost to us of any services or professional fees within the quote, the financial value of the profit that will be added, and we can change this by using the sliders to adjust the markup percentage and the quotation price that the client will be paying for these. Below the box is where we can add on our markups to the different elements of the work. We can see the overall financial information for the job. Let's take a look. The first figure is the gross percentage that's being added to the direct costs. So the programme's looking at the direct costs, then working out the overall percentage that's going to be added onto them. At this stage, unless we make the decision to not include any allowance for overheads, this is not to be confused with the clear profit percentage. The clear profit on costs percentage is here. We are allowing for overheads on this job, so we can see that this percentage is less than the gross. Here is the clear percentage of profits on the quotation price. We have mentioned overheads several times in this movie. When running a business, it's normal for there to be ongoing costs, regardless of whether any actual building jobs are taking place. This would be things like office space and equipment, vehicles, their maintenance, insurance and fuel, an accountant, perhaps a secretary, phones, advertising and so on. These are what's known as overheads. The money for these things needs to come from somewhere. So we can allow an overheads percentage or allowance on each job we do to cover them. By allowing for the overheads, it ensures we have a true indication of the clear profit that will be gained for our business from this job. We can adjust the percentage allowed for overheads by using the sliders and we can see the financial value that's being allowed for them here. Below this, we can see the clear profit that will be made from this job. So this is the figure that's left once the direct costs and overheads have been taken out of the overall quotation price. Next, we can see the total direct costs. Below this, we have the total of all the markups, overheads and clear profit. And below this, we have the total quotation price. Finally, we can allow for any VAT that may be required. We simply put the VAT percentage for the job into this box. The programme will calculate the VAT by adding the percentage that is in this box onto the total quotation price. And we can see the financial value of the VAT here. Here is the total price for the job. This price will be inclusive of any VAT that has been added. We'll notice that there are blue info icons next to each figure listed in this final box. We can click these if we require any further clarification about what the figure is. To the left hand side, we have a colour coded pie chart. This handy visual reference shows us how the different cost elements of the job are broken down. OK, so we've now looked in detail at all the information that is available to us in the summary. We can see all of the direct costs and do have complete control over the markups and overheads. As mentioned at the start, this summary is designed for you and your business. There is a separate client summary. They too can see a snapshot of the quotation costs, but the client summary has all the markups, overheads and profits built in. There is a separate movie showing this in detail.